Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today, I'll be doing the 29th chapter from H.A. Roberts' book, Disease Classification Psychosis. So this is divided into three parts. So I'll be doing the first part today. This topic has been taken because I had got many requests from my subscribers to do this topic. So hence, I'm doing it for them. Well, psychosis is generally understood to be the gonorrheal poison. We should, however, make the distinction clear between gonorrhea and psychosis. So now, Robert says that, now let us find out what is the difference between gonorrhea and psychosis. So gonorrhea is the acute infection of the gonococci. It has an incubation period of five to 10 days to develop urethritis after an exposure. So gonorrhea is the actual gonorrheal disease and the incubation period of five to 10 days before urethritis develops after an exposure. The local manifestations are thrown outward by nature due to the insult of the vital energy to the infection. So when the person has gonorrhea, the vital force is overburdened or is insulted. So it throws it out on some local part of the body in order to save the person's life. If gonorrhea is thoroughly and completely cured, practically no psychosis ever develops. So if gonorrhea is completely cured, then psychosis will not develop. So basically gonorrhea is the actual gonococcal infection with the incubation of period of five to 10 days before urethritis develops. And the local manifestations are thrown out by the vital force in order to maintain life. Now, psychosis is, so the word psychosis is used when the gonorrhea is suppressed. So psychosis is established after a suppressed gonorrhea. So basically when a person has gonorrhea and if it is suppressed, by the so-called modern treatment, then psychosis will develop. If, however, it is suppressed by external means, then it invades every cell, living cell in the body and becomes a, st a systemic stigma. So if there is a suppression by external means, by the form of cauterization or by the form of apl applications of sulfur, lead or zinc, uh, then what happens? Then <clears throat> the suppression is there and it invades every living cell of the body and it causes a systemic stigma on the body. So stigma is left on the body in any of the system. It transmits its deadly destructive forces to the offspring also. So also in the offspring, or it is transmitted from generation to generation, from family to family, if the gonorrhea is suppressed. So psychosis is transmitted from generation to generation, from family to family. The suppressed gonorrheal infection first shows itself in, in attacking the blood and producing an anemic condition and a general kata condition is set up. So basically, the, if the gonorrhea is suppressed, then psychosis develops and it manifests itself in the form of anemia by attacking the RBCs. Many a times, inflammatory rheumatism also develops. So also another feature of psychosis is inflammatory rheumatism. Not only that, but inflammation follows in the soft tissue and the change occur in the fibers of the muscles too. Sometimes stasis develops in the lymphatics and there is swelling in the groin and inflammation in the prostatic gland. So as you all know, psychosis, it, it deals with stagnation. It deals with edema. It deals with uh, overgrowth. So out here, if the lymphatics are, are affected, then what happens? There is stasis in the, lymph, in, in the lymphatics as a result of which there is swelling. And as a result of which there is inflammation and especially in the lymphatic in the groin region. And also the prostatic gland can get affected, it can get enlarged, it can swell, and it can cause different manifestations. However, these constitutional symptoms are not seen when the initial gonorrhea is cured by a homeopathically indicated remedy. And if there is a constitution, any constitution taint, it is a mild form. So, however, if the constitutional symptoms of the initial gonorrhea is cured by 
the indicated homeopathic remedy, then it is fine. But the transmission of this gonadal poison or psychotic poison will depend upon the stage in which transmission transmitted to the infecting individual. So naturally, the transmission of the gonadal poisoning or the psychotic poison will depend upon which stage the individual is in. If it is a true gonorrheal infection, true gonorrhea will be transmitted. If it is reached the secondary stage, which usually comes on three months after the first stage has subsided and may be delayed for a full year, the other person will develop the condition at the same time, at the same stage as that of the infector. The secondary and tertiary symptoms of psychosis can be entirely eradicated by homeopathic treatment. So if the correct homeopathic medicine is given, then we can definitely treat the psychosis. In the secondary period of psychosis, almost every disease that may arise takes on an inflammatory nature. So out here in psychosis, again, inflammation is marked. Also in Sora, inflammation is marked, but in psychosis, what, what happens? There is inflammation, there is stasis, there is edema, there is sluggishness or slowness of the function of a particular part, location or organ. So the inflammation, the inflammatory could be acute, subacute or chronic, or it may vary from very mild to very malignant fever. Now example which Robert has given is that a newly married, perfectly healthy girl soon becomes ill. It is due to the fact that the secondary symptoms of psychosis has been transmitted to the extensive mucous surface of the female body. So a newly married girl is there, she becomes ill, it is because of the transmission of psychosis on the mucous surface of the female organs. Many a times a single organ may be involved like the ovary with its cystic manifestations. So here again, another manifestation of psychosis that is involvement of the ovary with cystic manifestation. So cyst in the ovaries, again, they are psychosis or a fallopian tube getting involved which manifests itself with inflammation or inflammatory of the fallopian tube also. An anemic state develops in the blood, which affects every part of the organism, which comes on gradually until a whole system is affected. So as you can see, the organ is affected, then the, the, the blood, the, the, there is a destruction of the, or there is an anemic state, as a result of which every system of the whole system of the body is affected. She becomes pale and puffy, there is no stamina, her muscles become Peak. So she becomes pale because of anemia. She becomes puffy again because of anemia. Of course, there is no stamina and the muscles become peak. So all these are the constitutional traits of the psychosis. The anemic condition arises from the stigma because psychosis destroys the red blood cells through imperfect oxida oxidation of food. So out here, the anemic condition is there. And why is it psychosis? Because of the destruction of the red blood cells because of imperfect oxidation of food. So because of imperfect oxidation of food, the, anemia, the anemic condition is there in psychosis. However, the individual may harbor some other disease like diabetes, Bright's disease, which will depend upon the previously existing taints or stigma in our own system. So it, I mean, Robert says also that the individual besides having the fallopian tubes or the ovaries be, become, become the cystic, the person also may harbor some other disease, for example, diabetes or Bright's disease. Why? Because they are there because of some stigma or some taint which has occurred in the system previously. So this is what he wants to say, giving this example. So that's all for this part one. Please be... Uh, to, please be due uh, stay in tune for more part 2 is coming up soon thank you